This video is not approved or endorsed by Accuracy International Limited. Unauthorized maintenance may void the warranty on your rifle. If you bust your stick, don't blame us. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical and today we're going to replace the barrel on our Accuracy International AE Mark II. This procedure also applies to the AE Mark III rifle. Our rifle came from the factory with a 20 inch braked 308 barrel. We're going to replace this barrel with a 26 inch Krieger aftermarket barrel chambered in 243 Winchester. We're going to start by unloading our rifle and checking the chamber visually and physically verifying that there is no ammunition in the weapon. You're then going to remove your scope and any other accessories that you have on the rifle such as bipods, slings, etc. Set the rifle on its side and then remove the skins. If you have Viper skins on your rifle, like the rifle here, You'll want to start by removing the back strap so you can access all of the skin mounting screws. If your rifle is a folding version, then you'll only need to remove the front half of the skins. The buttstock half of the skins can remain on the rifle for this procedure. Once you've got all the screws removed, it's a simple matter just to peel the skins off of the chassis. Once you have that complete, set your buttstock at about a 45 degree angle, hit the bolt release and remove your bolt. You're then going to flip the action over and remove the action screw, starting with the rear action screw. You'll want to just loosen this one up. Then fully remove the front action screw. Once we have the front action screw completely out, finish the job by completely removing the rear action screw and then lifting the chassis off the action. For this video we're using a Wheeler Engineering barrel vise. It uses oak blocks to hold the barrel in place. A key point to this procedure is use rosin in the notches and the blocks in order to assist in holding the barrel. The rosin really helps in the barrel sticking to the wood of the blocks. You want to make sure that all points where the barrel will contact the wooden blocks are coated with rosin. Now we're going to tighten the nuts down on top of the barrel vise. You want to use a considerable amount of tension to tighten these down. You don't want any chance of the barrel rotating inside the blocks. We're using an AI action wrench from Dennis Adams in Virginia. This is an extremely well machined tool. Simply hit the bolt release and slide the action wrench into the action. Then insert the key with the rubber pad on the key facing up. The rubber pad serves to protect the inside of the ejection port. We're then going to grab our breaker bar with a 3 quarter inch deep well socket. We're using a six pointed socket in order to better match up with the hex side of the tool. It takes a considerable amount of force to break the action loose, but once you have it loose you can remove the action wrench and finish backing the action off the barrel by hand. Then remove your recoil lug and you'll notice on the barrel that there's a smooth shoulder. The AW barrels do not have this, they're threaded all the way up to the end of the shoulder. Loosen up your barrel vise and remove the factory barrel. If you've used the rosin an appropriate amount of torque tightening the barrel vise, you shouldn't have any marks in the finish on the barrel. We're now going to remove the smaller diameter barrel blocks and install larger diameter blocks to accommodate the outside diameter of the Krieger barrel.
The procedure is exactly the same. We'll start by sprinkling some rosin into the bottom of the block and smear it around to make sure it coats the entire contact area of the block. Make sure you protect the crown of the barrel when you place it in and then set it in the notch in the block. We're going to set the top block on just to hold things in place while we place more rosin on top of the barrel. Set the block in place and then begin tightening the barrel vise down by hand. Once you've got everything lined up, grab your wrench and crank the barrel vise down. Slide your recoil lug on, then begin threading the action onto the new barrel. Once you've got it on a couple of turns, you'll slide the recoil lug back, matching the pin up to the notch in the action, and then finish threading the barrel on by hand. Thread the action on until it's nice and snug, then insert your action wrench. This time when you place the key in, the rubber pad will be facing down to protect the bottom of the ejection port. Place your three-quarter inch socket onto your torque wrench and set your torque wrench to 100 foot-pounds. Support the action in the action wrench with your left hand while you're torquing the action down. I prefer to make sure that I get two clicks on the torque wrench to ensure that everything's tightened to spec. Then remove your barrel wrench and install your bolt. We're going to check the headspace with a no-go gauge. The bolt should not lock down on the no-go gauge. Then remove the no-go gauge and grab your go gauge. This barrel's got fairly tight headspace on it so it only locks down slightly further on the go gauge than it did on the no-go gauge. So to verify that everything's okay, we're going to go ahead and grab a sized piece of new brass. And we're going to insert that into the chamber. The bolt locks all the way down with no excessive force on the brass. Remove the barreled action from the blocks. You'll notice that we've got a good deal of rosin still stuck to the barrel. It cleans off quickly with some acetone. Drop your chassis back onto the action and ensure that you've slid the chassis forward as you tighten down the action bolts. Action screws should be tightened down to 89 inch pounds. Continue by reinstalling your skins. Reinstall the back strap, then your optics and any accessories. That's all there is to it. Now we've converted our 308 to a fast flat shooting 243. This video is not approved or endorsed by Accuracy International Limited. An authorized maintenance may void the warranty on your rifle. If you bust your stick, don't blame us.